Good evening, everyone. Um, we're on here a few minutes early to allow people to sign in. If you need uh, to find the bulletin, uh, it's on the link. Uh, there's a link posted in the description of this video. zoomed in on that one. Yeah, it is. Because my head is bigger than yeah, this pool. Sure. It's bigger. That's not very stupid. Not. I, there's a box of crayons right there for you, kiddo. Oh, I want more crayons. Sweetheart, nope. Those are the ones you can use for right now. Do you need to go into your calming corner, kiddo? Mm -hmm. For a few minutes before we start church? No. I just did. We know. Can you take some deep breaths, please, and calm down? Good evening. Sweetheart, you're on mommy's hand. Rollin, can you hear us okay on Zoom? Test, test. Happy Good Friday. Hi, yes. everyone. Hi, everyone. <gasps> what? Uh, uh, on Daddy's computer. I don't know. What, do, what are you looking at? Um, uh, he, Daddy, is on the side of oh. the... Yeah. Yeah, the Did camera you? isn't mirrored. It's, it does. It. It's been doing that each time, but we also yeah. talk about it each time, don't we? Yeah. That's. Do you remember what today is? No. Good Friday. Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember why this church service is extra special? Mm. And what today's about? Mm, yeah. Can you tell me? Um, cause Jesus died, and we need to be serious. We do need to be serious. Yep. Mm -hmm. Do you remember why Jesus died? Because we think God was mean, but he got dead, so we know that God is nice. Yeah, yeah kind of. Mm -hmm. Actually, for real, actually. People didn't know how much God loved them, and people mm -hmm. forgot what God wanted them to do. Mm hmm how about you? Can you call in with this? Because your computer doesn't pick up our audio very good. Four seven seven two ten eighty two thirty three.
parade. Good catch. What? I'm find, um, can you find a page for me that doesn't have a lot of black? You can do any page in there, kiddo. That whole book is yours, or so are those. Good evening. Uh, welcome to worship this Good Friday evening. We gather in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We join in confession and forgiveness. God of heaven and earth, you come in close and make us yours. Confess our sin, embrace your forgiveness and seek the way you set before us in your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. With honesty of heart, let us confess our sin. Merciful God, forgive, forgive us. us. Our will is chained to sin, and we cannot break free. We have spoken when we should have kept quiet. We were silent when we should have said something. We acted when we knew better. We were still when we know we should have moved. We spread fear when we should have spread love. For the wrong we, we have, have done, done, for the good we have failed to do, have, have mercy on us, through Jesus Christ, Christ our Savior and Lord. Lord. Amen. People of God, look to the Son, given to heal you and set you free. God reaches out to you in grace and mercy, because God loves you. Take hold of life, eternal life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Son, Son of God, God your suffering for our, our sin is great. We, we offer you all that we have and all that we are. Restore us as we are reminded that we are redeemed because of all you have done. Amen. Our first reading this evening comes from Psalm 22. Um, before we begin, I'd like to highlight that this psalm is the one uh, that Jesus quotes when he's on the cross, when Jesus cries out, uh, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? That is the beginning of Psalm 22. Uh, so even in the midst of deep suffering and pain, uh, Jesus turns to Scripture to uh, voice how he is feeling. I invite you to listen, Psalm 22. 
My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me, from the words of my groaning? O oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but find no rest. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted within my breast. My mouth is dried up like a potsherd. My tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death. For dogs are all around me. A company of evildoers encircles me. My hands and feet have shriveled. I can count all of my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothes among themselves, and from my clothing they cast lots. But you, O Lord, do not be far away. O my help, come quickly to my aid. Deliver my soul from the sword, my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the mouth of the lion, from the horns of the wild oxen, you have rescued me. Here ends our first reading. Our second reading this evening comes from Mark chapter 15, verses 16 through 39. Again, if you're finding this in your Bibles at home, it's Mark chapter 15, verses 16 through 39. I'll even type it in there for you. See if that's right. No, sixteen. Oh. There's a three. Mark fifteen verses sixteen through thirty nine. Then the soldiers led Jesus into the courtyard of the palace, that is the governor's headquarters. And they called together the whole cohort, and they clothed Jesus in a purple cloak, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him, and they began saluting him, Hail, King of the Jews! They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. Stop. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha! You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself! and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now, so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with Jesus also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, Listen, he is calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. 
Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly this man was God's son. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Our reading tonight's one that's uh, fairly well known. We, we hear this story each year on Good Friday. Uh, but we also hear about Jesus' death throughout the year. Now for, for Christians, this is really this is a foundational story. Um, but for maybe if you're not a Christian, you might not have heard this before. Uh, so for Christians, this moment is a key moment in the history of the world. What we hear tonight is an ultimate display of the love that Jesus has for God and the love that Jesus has for you and me in the world. What's so amazing about this story is that Jesus actually chooses to die. Jesus allows this to happen to him. Even as everyone around him turns against him, abandons him, ridicules him, derides him. I see these events as Satan trying to prevent Jesus' sacrifice from happening. I see here reasons upon reasons for Jesus to not go through with this crucifixion, to use his power to avoid this event altogether. And these reasons start popping up all over the place as Jesus' time draws near. Jesus gathers his disciples together for the Passover meal, and declares to the group that one of his closest friends is going to betray him. <coughs> Jesus declares that one of his most loyal followers, Peter, will publicly deny Jesus three times. Jesus invites some of his friends to go and pray with him, and we hear these words in Mark chapter 14, verses 35 through 37. And going a little farther, Jesus threw himself on the ground and prayed that, if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. Jesus came and found his disciples sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Jesus prayed this prayer three times, and after each time of prayer, his disciples were sleeping instead of praying for their friend. After this, Judas appears on the scene, betrays Jesus with a kiss. Upon seeing the soldiers and Jesus being arrested, Jesus' disciples abandon him and flee into the night. Then Jesus goes through a harrowing series of trials, each bringing lies against him, trying to find a reason to kill him. Jesus is brought first to his fellow Jews. Jesus is spit upon, blindfolded, struck on the head, and ridiculed. They finally find an excuse to kill Jesus, and so they bring him before Pilate, the Roman governor, the one who has authority to execute criminals. Pilate cannot find a reason to kill Jesus, but for the sake of the crowd, and wanting to avoid a riot, he allows Jesus to be crucified. Jesus, who was welcomed as a Jewish king not even a week ago to this very city, who heard shouts of Hosanna in the highest, which means save us, Jesus now hears the same city cry out passionately for his blood, crucify him. Pilate, wanting to appease the crowd, has Jesus flogged which means beaten with a rod or a whip as torture. And then Pilate sends Jesus away to be crucified. And this is where our reading picks up this evening. As we heard, Jesus was mocked by the Roman soldiers, given a purple cloak and a crown of thorns, and derided as the king of the Jews. And they led him to be crucified. In the Gospel of Mark, while hanging on the cross, Jesus was ridiculed, mocked, and derided on all sides. The chief priests, scribes, and people passing by all mocked him and jeered at him. Even those who were in a similar situation of torture and death, the two criminals hanging by Jesus, they also mocked him and tormented him. 
Jesus was alone in the midst of this torture, ridicule, and pain. And Jesus cries out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus even feels that God has abandoned him. And yet Jesus still chooses to die. Jesus is the Son of God. He's performed amazing miracles. He's healed people. He's brought someone back from the dead. He has plenty of power. And Jesus had plenty of reasons to stop his execution. Jesus had plenty of excuses. His disciples abandoned him. His friends betrayed him. His friend denied even knowing him. The city that he loved cried out for his blood. The leaders of his faith lied about him. The Roman governor did not care about justice. The people who Jesus loved turned on him. Why should Jesus die for them? Why should Jesus die for us? Jesus had all the outside forces of this world turn against him. And yet... Jesus still chose to die out of love for them. Love for you, love for me, love for the world. Jesus chose not to get even with us for our terrible crimes, but rather to love us. And this demonstrates God's character. We often make decisions based on what is happening around us, what our friends are doing, what our city is doing, what our country is doing, and we allow these forces to determine our actions. Well, he hit me first, so it's okay if I hit him. Or so-and-so got a new vehicle, combine, TV, phone, etc., so I have to get one too. Or that kid gets bullied, so I'm going to bully him too, so I won't get bullied. We do this all the time in our lives, allowing outside forces to determine our actions, allowing the situation to determine what we will do. However, Jesus does not allow outside forces to determine his actions. Jesus allows God to be his guiding light through all situations. Jesus knows that it is God's will for him to die, even prays that God would find another way. And yet Jesus still prays, not my will, but yours be done. In the death of Jesus, we see clearly the love that Jesus has for God and the love that Jesus has for humanity, for you. When Jesus was asked what the most important command was, Jesus responded in Mark chapter 12, verses 29 through 31. The first command is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And the second is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Jesus lives these commands in the face of abandonment, torture, and ridicule. Jesus demonstrates what it means to love God and love our neighbors. It is on the cross that we see love displayed most clearly. Jesus did not allow outside forces to determine his actions. Jesus chose to love God and to love his neighbors. Jesus chose to walk willingly into suffering, betrayal, death, and destruction because Jesus knew it would honor God and it would ultimately save the world. Brothers and sisters, as we ponder anew this critical moment in history, the death of the Son of God, I want you to hear this good news. Jesus loves you this much. Jesus underwent this great suffering out of love for you and the world. This is how much you matter to God. So in the midst of this pandemic, in the midst of our own loneliness, our own suffering, our own pain, we might look to the cross and follow in Jesus' footsteps. To not be persuaded by outside forces, but instead to choose to act in love toward God and love toward our neighbors. 
Even if this love means not being with family and friends. Even if this love means being confined to our homes for months. Even if this love means working from home while teaching your kids and trying to stay sane. Even if this love means continuing to work outside the home to provide for family, for the community, the sick, those in desperate need. While we live our lives as Christians, we are called to look to the cross, to keep in perspective how God chooses to act in love regardless of the circumstances. Brothers and sisters, it is my prayer that you would know God's love for you and be changed. May you follow in the footsteps of Jesus, loving God and loving your neighbors in whatever situation you find yourself. Amen. Amen. Nope, I want it this way because this is what we're going to do next. I invite you to join in singing a hymn. Uh, if you look in the description of our Facebook Live post, there is a link there with the bulletin. Uh, or you can just search for the hymn, Were You There? That's the song we're going to be singing. And as we sing this song, uh, in the Gospel of Mark, uh, we hear of only um, some women who were in the distance who were um, watching Jesus get crucified. It's kind of the only people who were there, and they weren't even, weren't even really close. Uh, so while we sing this song, Were You There?, the obvious answer is no. I mean, this was 2,000 years ago. But even those who loved Jesus weren't there. So as we ponder this song and sing this song, Were You There?, uh, I encourage you to think about uh, no, you know, we weren't there for Jesus, but who can we be there for now uh, in our lives? Were we there for our neighbor? Were we there for uh, hungry people? Were we there for those who are in need? Uh, and I wonder, um, as Christians, who can we be there for now? I invite you to sing.
talked about this. Do you remember why it's a sad day? Mm -mm. Because today we remember the Friday that Jesus died because he tried to show everybody God's love and they got mad at him and didn't want to show him love and they ended up killing him. Mm. But it's also a good day, so we call it Good Friday because God raised him from the dead. And, and that Jesus chose to die out of love for us so that we wouldn't have to be afraid of death. <laughs> Look at my flower. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, we got some prayers coming up. Okay, Sophie Sue? Okay. And Jesus okay. showed us how much God loves us, so we know that even oh. today God loves oh, us so much. All right, let's take a break from this. So it's a good day. Now we were playing too rough with it, Daddy. Mm -hmm. Set later. So we're gonna pray now, okay? Okay, can I sit on your lap? Please? You can sit on my lap. Plummy's gonna read the prayers. <laughs> okay, can you fold your hands? Mm -hmm. Let us join together in prayer. Let us pray, brothers and sisters, for the Holy Church throughout the world. Almighty and eternal God, you have shown your glory to all nations in Jesus Christ. By your Holy Spirit, create unity amid diversity. Guide the church and gather it throughout the world. Help us to persevere in faith, proclaim your name, and bring the good news of salvation in Christ to all people. Strengthen and uphold leaders and help each of us in our various vocations to faithfully do the work you call us to. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Let us pray for the Jewish people, the first to hear the word of God. Almighty and eternal God, long ago you gave your promise to Abraham and your teaching to Moses. Hear our prayers that the people you called and elected as your own may receive the fulfillment of the covenant's promises. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for those who do not share our faith in Jesus Christ. Almighty and eternal God, gather into your embrace all those who call out to you under different names. Bring an end to interreligious strife and make us more faithful witnesses of the love made known to us in your Son. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for those who do not believe in God. Almighty and eternal God, you created humanity so that all may long to know you and find peace in you. Grant that all may recognize the signs of your love and grace in the world and in the lives of Christians and gladly acknowledge you as one true God. We, act, we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for God's creation. Almighty and eternal God, you are the creator of a magnificent universe. 
Hold all the worlds in the arms of your care and bring all things to fulfillment in you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for those who serve in public office. Almighty and eternal God, you are the champion of the poor and oppressed. In your goodness, give wisdom to those in authority, so that all people may enjoy justice, peace, freedom, and a share in the goodness of your creation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for those in need. Almighty and eternal God, you give strength to the weary and new courage to those who have lost heart. Heal the sick, comfort the dying, give safety to travelers, free those unjustly deprived of liberty, and deliver your world from falsehood, hunger, and disease. Hear the prayers of all who call on you in any trouble, that they may have the joy of receiving your help in their need. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for our world in light of COVID-19. Almighty and eternal God, you are the one who promises healing who offers hope. We pray for the end to this illness, for the restoration of our lives. We pray for those who have lost loved ones. Comfort them in their grief. We pray for all those who serve in health care and grocery stores, trucking companies, delivery services, emergency services, janitorial services, schools, and all who are endeavoring to serve and sustain life in this time. Give them strength and wisdom. We pray for all those who are lonely in this time of distance. Provide avenues for friendship and caring community. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Finally, let us pray for all those things our Lord would have us ask. Our, our Father, Father, who, who art, art in heaven, heaven Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Sisters and brothers in Christ, we do not end this service in blessing, we wait. Because this is not the end. We linger in this in-between time, this time of yearning, as we wait eagerly for hope to spring within us and among us. We ache for the resurrection dawn, and this awkward, painful waiting bears witness to our longing for healing and restored life. We ache for a time when there will be no more weeping and no more sorrow, and resurrection life is all that we know. Together and apart, we wait. <laughs> 